In what culture do you think obesity is considered a sign of beauty and wealth? Let me introduce you to the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, a sovereign nation nestled in the northwest corner of Africa. Bordered by the vast Atlantic Ocean to the west, and neighbors like Western Sahara, Algeria, Mali, and Senegal, while Mauritania is a land steeped in history and diversity. Interestingly, a staggering 90% of Mauritania's territory lies within the Sahara, making it a vast, desert landscape. However, most of its population of approximately 4.3 million people live in the more temperate south of the country. The capital city, Nouakchott, located on the Atlantic coast, is home to about one-third of the country's inhabitants. A desert country that's hot, dry, and dusty, Mauritania has much more to it than meets the eye. Let's dive into the paradoxical beauty standards of Mauritania, a country where the norms of physical attractiveness deviate significantly from the global trend of slim and fit bodies. Mauritania, nestled in northwest Africa, is a deeply patriarchal society. Here, women and girls are often conditioned to believe they're inferior to men and that their role is to please men for a fulfilling life. The beauty standards reflect this mindset, with obesity being equated to beauty, wealth, and desirability. This unique preference for obesity among women traces its roots back to the ancient Moors, the nomadic Muslims of Arabic and Berber descent, who form about two-thirds of Mauritania's population. For these early Moors, a fat wife, much like fat livestock, was a symbol of affluence. It was proof that the man was wealthy enough to feed her generously while others struggled in the drought-prone terrain. This societal norm, formed centuries ago, still holds sway in modern Mauritanian culture. The preference for larger bodies is so ingrained that there are instances of forced feeding, where young girls are made to consume large quantities of food to gain weight quickly, a practice that can have severe health consequences. But it's important to remember that these standards don't define every woman in Mauritania. There are those who resist, who challenge these norms and assert their autonomy over their bodies. Yet, the pressure to conform can be intense, and many women find themselves trapped between cultural expectations and their own desires for health and autonomy. It's a fascinating, albeit perplexing, example of how beauty standards can vary so greatly from one culture to another, and how these standards are often a reflection of underlying societal structures and values. In Mauritania, a man's wealth was once determined by his wife's weight, a tradition that still impacts the society today. Did you know that despite its Arab identity, Mauritania is actually a majority black country? Quite intriguing, isn't it? The ethnic composition of Mauritania is as complex as it is fascinating. This Islamic Republic in Northwest Africa is a melting pot of cultures, languages, and traditions, making it a unique tapestry of human diversity. Let's delve into the heart of this multi-ethnic society. The Mauritanian population is split into three major groups. The Bidhan, also known as White Moors, make up about 30% of the population. The Haritan, or the so-called Black Moors, comprise 40%. Both these groups reflect a fusion of Arab-Berber ethnicity, language, and culture, which is a testament to the country's rich history and its interactions with different civilizations. Now, you might be wondering, who makes up the remaining 30%? This is where the sub-Saharan ethnic groups come into the picture. These groups with their distinct languages and customs add another layer to Mauritania's vibrant ethnic mosaic. So, in essence, Mauritania is 70% West African and 30% Berber. But what does this mean? It means that Mauritania is a place where different cultures have intertwined over centuries, creating a society that's both diverse and harmonious. The ethnic composition of Mauritania isn't just about numbers, it's about the stories these numbers tell. It's about the nomadic Moors who roamed the Sahara, the Berbers who interacted with the Romans, and the sub-Saharan groups who brought their unique customs and traditions. It's about the fusion of Arab-Berber ethnicity with indigenous African cultures, resulting in a society that's rich in heritage and diversity. So, the next time you think of Mauritania, remember this. It's not just an Arab country or a black country. It's a country where different ethnic groups have come together, each contributing to the rich tapestry that makes Mauritania what it is today. Mauritania, a blend of cultures and ethnicities, is a fascinating study in diversity. A journey into its ethnic composition is a journey into the heart of human diversity, a journey that reveals how cultures can intertwine and coexist, creating a society that's as complex as it is fascinating. 
Ever wondered where the name Mauritania originates from? Let's journey back in time to the 3rd century BC, to an ancient Berber kingdom. This kingdom flourished for centuries, weathering the rise and fall of empires, until it eventually became a province of the vast Roman Empire. The Romans named this province Mauritania, a name that would endure well into the 7th century AD. But where did this name come from? The term Mauritania was derived from the Maori, or Moors, the very people who inhabited this land. Fast forward to the present day, and you'll find that this ancient name has survived, albeit in a slightly modified form, as Mauritania. So, the next time you hear Mauritania, remember the ancient Berber kingdom, the Roman province, and the Maori people. What could possibly connect Mauritania to Yemen, you may ask? Well, the ties run deep, tracing back to ancestral lines. Many Berber tribes in Mauritania, the indigenous inhabitants, assert their origins to Yemen, a country located over 2,000 miles away. This claim isn't just based on oral history or cultural similarities, but on genetic evidence too. A DNA study conducted in the year 2000 revealed intriguing findings. It suggested that there could indeed be an ancient connection between the Yemeni people and the Berbers of Mauritania. So, while the vast Sahara Desert and the Red Sea separate these two nations, their peoples are intrinsically linked. This connection underscores the fact that our understanding of nations and their people goes beyond present geographical boundaries. It's about shared histories, deep-rooted ties, and common ancestors. In the veins of Mauritanians flows a connection that transcends geographical boundaries. What would you hear if you walked the streets of Mauritania? Well, the official and national language of Mauritania is Arabic, but not the Arabic you might be thinking of, the modern standard Arabic used typically for formal communication. Instead, you'd hear a local spoken variety known as Hassaniya. This version of Arabic is heavily sprinkled with Berber words, a nod to the country's Berber heritage. It's a unique linguistic blend that significantly differs from the Arabic you might hear on the news or read in a textbook. Hassania is a living testament to the country's rich and complex history, a reflection of the cultural fusion that defines Mauritania. It's a language that carries the echoes of the past, while still evolving and adapting to the present. Language, in Mauritania, is a beautiful amalgamation of the old and the new. What if being thin was considered sickly? Now that's a thought that flips our conventional standards of beauty on its head. But in Mauritania, a country nestled in Northwest Africa. This is a reality that shapes the lives of many women. Obesity isn't just accepted here, it's celebrated. A far cry from the global obsession with slimness, Mauritania's unique beauty standards link obesity with wealth, status, and desirability. This standard of beauty has deep roots in the country's history. Centuries ago, among the Moors, nomadic Muslims of Arabic and Berber stock who make up two-thirds of Mauritania's population, a fat wife was a symbol of a man's wealth. It was proof that he had enough riches to feed her generously while others perished in the drought-prone terrain. Today, these traditions persist, resulting in a high obesity rate among Mauritanian women. The desire to conform to these beauty standards to be seen as wealthy and desirable drives many to unhealthy lengths. There are even reports of force-feeding practices where young girls are encouraged to eat large quantities of food to gain weight quickly, a practice known locally as gavage. But it's important to note that these practices are not universal across the country. Mauritania is a diverse nation with a population that is 70% West African and 30% Berber. Different ethnic groups have different customs and standards of beauty, Furthermore, the country is undergoing a slow process of change, with younger generations challenging old norms. The impact of globalization and modernization is starting to be felt, with more and more people recognizing the health risks associated with obesity. Yet, for now, Mauritania remains a place where the scales tip differently when it comes to beauty. It's a stark reminder of the power of cultural norms and societal pressures in shaping our perceptions and behaviors. Here, thin is not in. In Mauritania, beauty is indeed in the eyes of the beholder. Can you imagine a place where slavery still exists, despite being outlawed? This isn't a tale from a history book, it's the stark reality of modern-day Mauritania. In this land, the remnants of a historical caste system persist, 
a system that continues to perpetuate the practice of slavery. In Mauritania, slavery is not just a relic of the past, but a living, breathing institution. It's a deeply entrenched societal structure that has been passed down through generations, and its roots can be traced back to the country's Arab Berber heritage. This system, known as descent-based slavery, effectively means that if one's ancestors were slaves, then one is likely to be a slave as well, a chilling inheritance that's not based on wealth or property, but on the denial of freedom. Mauritania's government officially abolished slavery in 1981, becoming the last country in the world to do so. Yet, it wasn't until 2007, a full 26 years later, that the practice was criminalized. This delay reveals the deeply ingrained nature of slavery in Mauritanian society, where laws can change, but mindsets are harder to shift. Even with these legislative changes, the shadow of slavery continues to loom large over the country. In 2012, it was estimated that between 10 to 20 percent of Mauritania's population, that's between 340,000 and 680,000 people, were living in conditions of slavery. Mauritania, a country where the Atlantic Ocean meets the Sahara, is a land of contrasts. It's a place where ancient traditions clash with modern ideals, where the fight for freedom is as relentless as the desert sun. Slavery might be a part of Mauritania's past and present, but the hope is that it won't be a part of its future. Mauritania, a land where the shadows of the past still loom large, yet as we delve deeper into the reality of this country, we can only hope that change is on the horizon and that the persistence of slavery will eventually be consigned to the annals of history. How can a country rich in natural resources have a low GDP? This question brings us to the crux of the paradox that is Mauritania's economy. Mauritania is a land blessed with abundant natural resources. It's a treasure trove of minerals, with vast reserves of iron ore, copper, and gold. Its coastal waters teem with fish, and it has significant untapped reserves of oil and gas. Yet, despite this wealth of resources, Mauritania's GDP remains low, and it is classified as a least developed country by the United Nations. The paradox lies in the utilization of these resources. While the country has the potential to be prosperous, a lack of infrastructure, technology, and skilled labor force hinders the extraction and efficient use of these resources. The country's mineral wealth, for instance, is largely exported in its raw form rather than being processed in Mauritania, which could generate more revenue and jobs. Moreover, the wealth that is generated from these resources doesn't trickle down to the majority of the population. Income inequality is high, with a small elite controlling a large portion of the country's wealth, while a significant part of the population lives in poverty. This has led to social tensions and political instability, which further discourages investment and hampers economic development. Another factor contributing to the economic paradox is the country's reliance on a single commodity for its export earnings. For Mauritania, this is iron ore. When the price of iron ore falls on the global market, as it often does, the country's economy takes a hit. Furthermore, the country's economic policies and governance issues, including corruption and lack of transparency, have also played a role in stifling economic growth. Despite numerous attempts at economic reform, progress has been slow and uneven. So, despite being blessed with a wealth of natural resources, Mauritania struggles with poverty, underdevelopment, and economic instability. It's a paradox that underscores the complex interplay between resources, governance, and economic development. Mauritania, a land of contrasts where wealth and poverty coexist. So, what makes Mauritania unique? You might ask. Well, it's a blend of its beauty standards that glorify obesity as a symbol of wealth and status, its diverse ethnic composition that intertwines Arab Berber and Sub-Saharan cultures, and the historical roots of its name that hark back to the ancient Berber kingdom of Mauritania. It's the connection to Yemen, visible in the Berber tribe's claims of Yemeni origins. It's the Arabic language, spoken with a local twist known as Hassaniya, peppered with Berber words and distinct from modern standard Arabic. It's the lingering issue of obesity among women, fueled by traditional standards of beauty. It's the persistent problem of slavery, a grim legacy of historical caste systems, it's the economic paradox of a country rich in natural resources, yet burdened with a low GDP. Mauritania, a country rich in history and culture, yet grappling with complex social and economic issues. Isn't it fascinating? 
As we continue our journey through Mauritania, we move from its diverse ethnic composition to its varied and stunning landscapes. Mauritania, a land of contrasts, is a feast for the eyes. From the vast, sandy expanses of the Sahara, where the dunes shift and change with the winds of time, to the lush greenery of the Senegal River Valley, a verdant oasis that teems with life. Each landscape tells a different story, each with its own unique charm. Visitors to Mauritania can expect a sensory overload. Imagine standing atop a towering sand dune, looking out over a sea of golden sand, shimmering under the relentless African sun. Or perhaps you'd prefer the cool tranquility of the Senegal River Valley, where the air is filled with the sweet scent of flowering plants and the gentle rustle of leaves. But Mauritania's beauty isn't just natural. The country's rich cultural heritage is reflected in its architecture, music, and festivals. From the ancient stone houses of Chinguetti to the vibrant sounds of the Moorish music, Mauritania captivates with its unique fusion of Arab and African cultures. So, whether you're a lover of nature, a history buff, or a culture vulture, Mauritania has something to offer. A country that captivates with its natural beauty, vibrant culture, and the warmth of its people, Mauritania truly is a gem waiting to be discovered.